Welcome back, everybody. Detectives and researchers believe there are serial rapists on our streets who target homeless women and homeless girls. This summer, someone believed to be a so-called super predator was arrested. His nickname on the street, according to police, is Rob the Rapist. Investigative reporter Morgan Lowe tells us how this case uncovered an entire population of vulnerable victims. It's Thursday night and we are on the corridor. It's where people go to buy and sell sex. And it's happening right before our eyes. You're going to see a single girl walking, probably on her phone. A lot of times the pimp's talking to them the whole time they're walking. And then you'll start to see the cars pull up. And when the right one makes the right deal, she'll get in. And they will disappear. This woman asked us to conceal her identity because she lived this nightmare for six years. I didn't, and I remember being picked up for the first time by a guy who asked me, was I working? And I said, no, I don't have a job right now. And he said, don't you want to make some money? And so I said, I thought to myself, nobody else will know. I hate myself that much. Um, I do need some money. I don't want to feel this. I had about $8, not enough to even buy a, 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 what I needed. So I did it. And I thought to myself, dang, this is my new way to get my drugs. This is my new crime. This is my new hustle. According to the latest study on homeless children and young adults, young people trafficked for sex reported selling themselves for food just as often as they do for money. So we don't find that kids are selling themselves. We find that people are finding them and selling them. Dominique Rowe Sepowitz is the director of ASU's Office of Sex Trafficking Intervention Research. And she says that more than nine out of 10 young people involved in prostitution are being trafficked. So we're seeing that these homeless young people are already really vulnerable, vulnerable to um, exploiters, vulnerable to traffickers. Last month, Mesa police arrested Jason Van Gundy and charged him with child sex trafficking. Court paperwork alleges that he housed four runaway juvenile victims. Then he transported them from his apartment to hotels and other locations for prostitution and received half of the proceeds as compensation for phones and shelter. I do. I think predators target these victims who are invisible to society. They're homeless. They're runaway. Those predators are traffickers, pimps, and johns. In August, Maricopa County Sheriff's deputies arrested Robert Incorvaya. Prosecutors charged him with 39 counts of sexual assault and kidnapping. Investigators believe he targeted at least a dozen women and at least one teenager on the streets from the 1990s to 2020. Court paperwork describes violent encounters, in Corvaya choking one woman until she passed out, waking her up by punching her in the face, sexually assaulting her, whipping her with a belt, picking up a 15-year-old runaway, sexually assaulting her, hitting her in the face, then trying to cut off her toes with pliers. Investigators say he was known on the streets as Rob the Rapist. He knows that that population is less likely to come forward to work with law enforcement to report the crime itself. Uh, so he is truly targeting and victimizing what is one of the most vulnerable populations in our society. When you're out there, you don't believe that they're going to help you. You believe that you're just going to be targeted as another criminal and you're going to get in trouble. Robert Incorvaya and Jason Van Gundy are facing prosecution, but those cases are rare. And an analysis of federal child sex trafficking cases shows the number of prosecutions has declined during the Trump administration from 273 cases in 2016 to 178 cases last year. There is a local effort to change things. Victims and survivors are coming forward and advocates like Dominique Rosepowitz are raising awareness. But there's a lot of work left to do. We're working on it. We have family advocacy centers and child advocacy centers, and we're all starting to work together. But this type of predator is out there, and, and the victims are silenced by him, but they're also silenced by our community. Advocates like Dominique Rose Sepowitz say they hope that these recent high-profile cases will show victims that it's okay to come forward and remind law enforcement officers that someone who might appear to be a street prostitute is also likely a crime victim. I'm Morgan Lowe for Arizona's Family. Morgan, thank you.